Well, Samvat 2078 has been a lackluster one if you have been an investor as both the Sensex and Nifty indices are down by about 5%. The only solace this Samvat it has given us is that the Indian markets have been quite resilient to the massive global sell-off that we've seen. And even though negative, Indian benchmarks, Sensex and the Nifty, have actually outperformed their global counterparts. Now, as we look forward to celebrating Diwali and the new year as well, fearlessly after nearly three years of pandemic and the lockdowns and living in uncertainty, there seems to be some festive cheer that is in the air. But will this ensure a year full of cheerful returns on the D Street? Is something we will look to hear from our expert today. Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is somewhat special market today. My guest on this somewhat 2079 special is one of the titans of Indian stock market, one of the most trusted and knowledgeable voices of the Indian stock markets. Mr. Nilesha joins in. He's the managing director at Kotak AMC. Welcome Mr. Shah and welcome uh, to Business Today TV and here's wishing you a very, very happy and a prosperous Diwali. Thank you, Sakshi, and wish all the viewers of Business Today channel a very happy and prosperous Diwali. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Well, uh, I want to start off by asking you about the markets, of course. Well, the markets, just like how I said, have been lackluster in the last one year. Uh, but at this point in time, we can say that just like how life is, market have seen both good and bad times in this year. Do you believe that, okay, whatever could go wrong has actually gone wrong with the markets, be the war, inflation, rate hikes, come what may. And now going forward, once again, we will look at a brighter year ahead. And will summer 2079 be a year of wealth creation for investors? I wish, Saksi, I can make those predictions. If you had asked me last year what would have been written, my answer would have been quite different from reality. As we stand today, I think it will be unfair to assume that next year will be year of wealth creation and there won't be any worry. Next year will be year of wealth creation for a disciplined investor who can take market volatility on stride, who can be a long-term investor. There will be challenges to the market from global scenario, which is deteriorating rapidly. There will be worries on oil, inflation, Russia, Ukraine situation, and how monetary policy around the world moves. So next year also will be as volatile as last year. Okay, it's going to be as volatile as last year. Well, uh, we remember summer 2077 when, you know, there was exuberance all around. Everything was going up. Everybody was very happy. But at the same time, analysts and experts like you were talking about, say, overheating, steep valuations as big concerns right now. At the end of summer 2078, are valuations looking more comfortable at this point? So here also, Sakshi, there are two viewpoints. When I presented to a foreign investor that on a one-year basis, India looks expensive vis-a-vis -vis its peer group, our historical valuation premium over emerging market peer is about 40%. Currently, mm -hmm. we are trading at 80%. He's requested that, Nilesh Pai, you need to change your outlook. On a five-year basis, India is the okay. cheapest emerging market available. So valuation okay. depends upon where you stand. Hmm. Okay, understood that. Well, um, what will it really take for the bulls to return to the D Street now? And will Nifty really breach that 20,000 mark in summer 2079? For that scenario to play out, we want Russia-Ukraine situation to end. We need clarity from US Fed that they are not going to raise interest rates. In fact, they are looking to cut interest rates. And the inflation problem, which is plaguing global, global economy, should mm. come down, should settle down. If these three things happen, then there is a reasonably good chance for Indian market to go and touch that magic number. Okay, understood that. Well, uh, so far in this year, we have seen that most of the sectors have actually witnessed massive correction, um, except for, say, Nifty Auto and FMCG. Um, you know, we've seen that the sectors have declined, um, especially when you talk about the IT, metals, those kind of sectors have actually dragged a lot. Uh, which are the sectors that investors should bet on in this new year? So apart from sector, one thing which is very important is the promoter and the management 
be with good promoters and good management hmm. don't get lured by just past performance from a sectoral point of view at kotak mutual fund we are bullish on banking and financial services we believe as their margins go up with rising interest rate scenario as the nps are well provided for and there is consolidation in business banking and financial will do well another sector where we believe there is renaissance is india's manufacturing okay. we were the largest mobile headset manufacturer in 2014 now we are second largest in chemical okay. sector we have almost doubled our market share in last couple of years so hmm. it's of manufacturing like industrial and capital goods chemicals and specialty chemicals electric and electronic components these are the themes which can do do out performance next year okay understood that you know we've been talking about how markets have corrected this year a major part of that you pointed out is the concern due to the war and the resultant inflation and the rising interest rate scenario now we've seen a huge fii money outflow also because of this however the retail money has kept flowing in despite all this uh, uncertainty and ups and downs and volatility but the question is that can the retail uh, participation and investment continue looking at the strengthening dollar the rise interest rates and uh, you know the kind of macroeconomic changes that we are witnessing now so the fpi is exited because indian markets delivered profit to them in last 8 years we have delivered about 8 times more return than our investors in hmm. last 20 years we have delivered one and half times return than our peer group second there was exit available as fpi sold 35 billion dollar mutual fund bought and third we were expensive visa visa our peer group now from a retail investor point of view india still provides greatest investment opportunity okay compared to the world which is caught in a massive sandstorm we hmm. are oasis in the desert undoubtedly we will be impacted by what happens globally but once the storm passes we will hmm. emerge as an oasis our long term growth story remains intact we are yeah. fifth largest economy today now imf predicts that we will become third largest economy by 2028 i think mm. retail investors believe in india growth story they will continue to pour their savings into indian equity markets yeah. and my feeling is that even fpis as they realize that they have cut profitable trade in india and wherever they have put they have actually lost money they will mm. also start coming back to india okay so um you know when i ask you from the point of view of a fresh and a first time investor we have seen a lot of them enter the market in the last two or three years now this is perhaps the first instance that they are witnessing a slowdown in the markets and red all across their portfolios too uh, oh. but uh, so what would your advice be for those first time investors at this point so one market is not a video game this is not the market <laughs> you come and punch some numbers and buy in and something it's a very serious thing if you don't know about market then please invest via mutual fund now i may sound like a barber who is advising on haircut but i'm genuinely concerned about retail investors you know not knowing the market not understanding the market and investing you need discipline to all first time investor my request will be please start first sip in equity mutual fund for a long term see how sip returns have gone up and down learn about the market and then go for direct investment correct right so uh, you know for these first time investors how should one really construct a portfolio at the beginning of this summer 2079 how to pick the right kind of stocks what is the strategy that one should adopt just go and pick up three or four mutual funds i hope one mm -hmm. of them will be kotak mutual fund when you want to invest directly in stocks you have to read last 10 years balance sheet you have yes. to go and watch management videos you have to form a view about company's profitability this requires time this requires knowledge unless until you have that kind of commitment please don't go and invest into stocks directly correct you have so if i yeah fund. 
Right. So mutual fund is the way to be in case you're a fresh first time investor. There is no two ways about it. But in case some people really want to follow, uh, you know, the financial advice uh, from professionals and then go into selecting some stocks, I want to understand from you, what is Mr. Nilesha's strategy of selecting stocks? What does he really look and how does he choose those multi baggers that new investors can also hope to have some time in their portfolios? So, to be honest, I rarely get a multi bagger in a one year horizon. The stocks okay. that I have picked up become multi bagger over 10 year, 15 year, 20 year horizon. Hmm. Hmm. It is my d- discipline and time in the market which makes money for me rather yeah. than my skill in predicting short term price movements. Hmm. My advice to my fund managers as well as to any other investor will be buy good company, run by good manager at good prices. So easy mm. to see, but very difficult to execute. Absolutely. A business, a business which earns more than its cost of capital is good business. What is good manager? A person who won't cheat you, a person whose governance record is impeccable. That's good management. And what is good price? A price at which you believe you are likely to get more profitability in the company's balance sheet then what market is discounting? These are all very simple, commonsensical thing to do, but it needs to be backed by conviction. Conviction comes from your own research. So buy good company at good prices, run by good managers, and stay invested for long term. Do remember, it's not timing the market which makes money for you. It's time yes. the market which makes money for you. Wow, that's a wonderful uh, line that you've given to all our viewers. Um, The time spent in the markets is more important than timing the important uh, markets as well. So very, very important uh, lesson right there. Now, while we talk a lot about, you know, what to buy, when to buy in the stock markets, how should a first time investor decide on when is the right time for them to sell or exit their investments? So selling or exiting investment is linked to two things. One, you need money for your objective. For example, if I was saving for my daughter's admission into a college, when she goes for college admission, I don't care where the market is. I have to sell, liquidate and pay for her tuition fees. So whenever your objective is requiring you to sell, please sell. The mm-hmm. second thing is from a portfolio point of view. That is what is called as asset allocation. Now, let's say, Saksi, you are a conservative investor having 50% equity, 50% In Jan 20, your 50% in equity would have gone to 60, 65%. That's the time to bring it down to 50. By March 20, that 50 would have fallen to maybe 25%. That was time to take it back to 50. So you are essentially booking profit at higher level and putting more money at lower level. This discipline of asset allocation guiding you when to take profit apart from redeeming money to pay for your investment object. Hmm. Understood that. So, um, you know, I want to understand from you as to what are you looking at in this market as an emerging theme, a promising big theme that could run in the markets for over next two to five odd years? Would it be renewable space? Would it be EVs? Would it be something that we've not yet seen enter in the market? So, Sakshi, we are more comfortable with the longer term trends, which we can understand. Now, I have no doubt that green hydrogen, electric vehicle, these are the long term trends. But do I have knowledge about them? Answer is no. Hmm. I rather focus upon trends which I can understand. We believe there is renaissance in India's manufacturing sector. China plus one is making India part of global supply chain management. There is orders coming from government as they are spending money on infrastructure. There mm. is order coming from private sector as capacity utilization has crossed pre-COVID level and people are looking to invest. There are opportunities mm. in exports market because of China plus one. So we believe manufacturing renaissance is a multi-year thing. We picked that up a couple of years back in chemicals. What we saw in chemicals and specialty chemical sectors over the last couple of years will get repeated in manufacturing sectors over the next Mm. couple of years. 
Okay, so I've understood from you a whole lot about, you know, what should one be really looking at potential investment opportunities in the market right now. But what should one really avoid getting into in the markets in summer 2079? So if I'm a father and I have to search <laughs> a bridegroom for my daughter, <laughs> I'm not ever going to give it to a bad person. Same way, why should I give my money to a bad promoter, bad manager? Yeah. Just stay away from managers who are bad promoters who are cheating you. Rest mm. everything else. Rising tide of India growth story will take care. Mm. Okay. And, uh, you know, now while we are all optimistic about the markets going in the right direction, in the positive direction, this ma your markets have grappled with the war, geopolitical crisis, rising inflation, liquidity reversal, all of that. What, according to you, be to, could be the biggest risk factor for markets in the new Sambat year? This year, we have to look at global developments. Mm. If a risk which market has not priced in materializes, then market will have a correction. For example, we have priced in lingering of uh, lingering of U.S., uh, Russian, and uh, Ukraine, Ukraine prices. But if it escalates to nuclear level, then we are in trouble. Okay. We have priced in U.S. Fed going to mid single digit. But if it goes into high single digit, there will be trouble. So okay. any risk which market is not priced in, if that materializes, markets will give correction. And they are likely okay. to come from global sides than local side. Okay. But would you still say that equity will be the place to invest in vis-a-vis -vis all other asset classes in this new summer 2079? Undoubtedly, yes. But yeah. not for 2079 view. When you invest okay. in equity, you take 5-year, 10-year view. You, hmm. you know, look to average into volatility. Markets could give correction like it happened in March 20. Or markets could rise like it happened in mid-21. You have to take advantage of the market by increasing or decreasing your asset allocation. If you do that, undoubtedly, equity is the best place to invest into. Okay, understood that. Well, I also have on a lighter note, a rap, uh, you know, rapid fire questions for you, Mr. Shah. And in this special, I would call it the would you rather segment where I will give you two choices and then you will have to pick one and also perhaps tell us why would you actually uh, you know rather choose one of them so the first question is would you rather invest in IT sector or financials financials okay and uh, would you rather invest in reliance industries or Adani greed I can't give stock specific <laughs> Okay, then would you rather invest in any of the new age stocks, you know, Paytm, Nika or Zomato or would you invest in one of the EV majors or the emerging thieves? Never say no to anything. Keep <laughs> mind open. Wherever you understand, go and invest. Okay, would you rather invest in cryptos or a startup? I'll prefer startup. Okay, would you rather have more time or more money? Uh, I'll have more money rather than time. Okay. And um, would you rather invest in gold or real estate? I prefer real estate. Okay. Last two or three questions on the one-line answers that you need to give. What is your most profitable investment to date? Uh, well, the most profitable investment is knowledge. I studied hard. I studied on scholarships from people and that knowledge is because where I have reached here. Okay. What is your dream investment? Well, the dream investment is one where you get financial freedom. Any investment which gives you freedom to pursue what you want is the dream investment. Okay. An investment decision that you have regretted? Oh, I started my career in early 90s. I lost all my money. I was... Okay. I had leveraged myself, so not only I lost all my money, but I lost even the leveraged money. So it was a tough decision. Okay, so you have made losses in the stock markets. That would be a big one for all the investors and viewers. Yes, I, that's why I said to the first time investors, please come by a mutual fund. No one had told me that if someone had guided me, I would not have begun on a disastrous note in market. Okay, what is the biggest money lesson that you would want to give to millennials? Income minus expenses is not equal to savings. 
it is income minus savings equal to expenses always save okay. first and then spend okay yeah, kept that on my note as well and hopefully all the viewers have done that on that note thank you so much mr shah for speaking to us on bt tv and here's wishing you a very sparkling diwali ahead thank you if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe 